What's up, Codeville? Ayo. Ayo, just another day in um, pleasant, pleasant Codeville. Uh, welcome back, uh, coders. It's the 21 Day Coding Challenge. I'm Nima Boscarino. This is... Gabby Giuliegi. Nice. And today we're going to be working uh, together on challenge number 20. Challenge 20. It's like the end of the coding challenge. We're basically done. Basically. There's one more day. Um, this is going to be a... This is one of my favorite challenges. I mean, I think they're all great. <laughs> they're all very good. Uh, this one, this one's a good one. Because um, we're going to be dealing with several functions. It's not something that you've necessarily done too much of over the course of the coding challenge. Um, but usually as a programmer, you deal with like lots of functions and you use the functions together. Um, so that's what we're going to be building today. At this point in the um, challenge, we're like deep in the festival. And so we had the election early, and then we had uh, the Smart City Initiative, and now we're automating a bunch of different things for the town fair and festival. What we're doing specifically here is uh, we're making a function that is going to help us figure out how much to pump the um, inflatable like balloons and attractions and stuff like that. So for example, there's like a giant duck, and that giant duck needs to be inflated. Uh, but we need to know what the volume of that duck is. So a duck is going to be made up of like two spheres for like the body and the head and then a cone for the beak. But then there's other stuff too, like a castle and all kinds of things. In general, each of the big kind of inflatable attractions are made up of uh, spheres, cones, and prisms. Right? Or prisms like a 3D rectangle. So we want to be able to eventually, by the end of this function, or by the end of this challenge, uh, calculate the volume of any one of those shapes. So we're implementing four functions. There's total volume, which just takes in an array of solids, right? a solid being a shape. And each of those shapes might be a prism or a cone or a sphere, so we want to tally those up. In the 21-day coding challenge, there's tests for every one of these functions. So you can start off with just the sphere volume function and just start on that one uh, and then work your way forward. So we're going to start with the sphere volume function and just work on this and ignore the other ones for the moment. So this function here, all it's supposed to do is receive a radius, right, where a radius is a measurement for a sphere. It's the, from the center to the edge, how long is it? And we want to calculate the volume of that sphere, how much space it takes up. Do you know what the formula for the sphere volume is? Hmm, I'm not too sure. I mean, either. Right? Um, we could we could sit here with like a pen and paper and try to figure it out. It's not worth it. Uh, we could go to university for I don't know four to six years. Maybe um, get a math degree. Maybe get a math degree, um, and probably not worth it for the challenge. Not for the twenty one day coding challenge. Um, instead, we'd use handy dandy Google. Uh, hello Google, uh, what is Let's just zoom right in on it. Uh, what is the volume of a sphere? And we should find out, oh, the formula for the volume of a sphere. And if you phrase it properly, like you could go read these things. But if you just Google volume of a sphere, um, Google even shows you a handy picture. Ooh, it's kind of nice. So the volume of a sphere is uh, that radius, right, r, 4 divided by 3 times pi times r cubed. So r cubed is going to mean r times r times r. Okay. So I could just take this, this idea, 4 divided by 3 times pi r cubed. And I could write it out. So if I had this, maybe maybe I'd write it down on a piece of paper first. I'm going to go and say uh, 4 divided by 3. Okay, so we can do division with the slash uh, times pi. Right? And I, I don't want my keys, like I don't have a pi key. But in the 21 encoding challenge, we actually gave you a variable for pi. So you can just say pi. Um, 4 divided by 3 times pi times, and then it was r cubed. Um, there's no symbol for me to like be able to get th the 3 very small up there. There is a function for doing cubed and for doing power in JavaScript, but we're not going to use that. Uh, instead, how am I going to do cubed here? You could do radius times radius times radius. Yeah, so radius times radius times radius. And it's going to be radius because even though Google says r, uh, our function takes in a value called radius. So I'll have to be consistent. And at the end of it, I want to make sure I return so that that value actually comes out. And I could go ahead and console.log. What is the sphere volume of? And then you want to come up with some radius for our sphere? Uh, 12. 12. Good radius. 
the radius. Let's see. I'll run this, and I got 7, 2, 3, 8, and then a bunch of numbers. Okay. 7, 2, 3, 8, pretty much it. We could see if this is right. Like, we'll check the sphere volume with the sphere of radius 12. Go here, right, 12. Moment of truth, 7, 2, 3, 8. So we got it. Cool. Here we go. We're, we're math wizards now, and we can do this with the other functions as well. Here's cone volume. Do I know the volume of a cone? No, but Google probably does. Google does, yeah, yeah. So I'd go um, volume of a cone, question mark, and it takes a second and then shows us. Uh, do, do you see any uh, familiar kind of usual suspects here? There's our friend Pi. Our friend Pi, hello. We're just right there. And yeah. our boy Radius. And our <laughs> boy Radius. What's up, Radius? <laughs> and we've even got a new friend, uh, Height H. So anytime you have a circle, you're going to be dealing with Pi. Right. So I'm going to take the volume of the cone, pi times r squared times h over 3. So I'll write this out. Pi, indent, so pi times, and then we don't have squares, so we're going to go radius times radius, radius, yeah, and then times, and then the thing that was left over, which was uh, height over 3. So I have height divided by 3. Right. And then throw a good old return statement over here. We'll see if this works. Console.log cone volume with a particular volume. You want to pick a radius and a height? Uh, 12 again mm -hmm. and 5. Nice, good numbers. It's 12 and 5. Let's see what this does. 753. We run this over in the volume of a cone. So 12 and 5. 753. Easy. Nice. So easy. We got it. Look at that math. Uh, you might find that like... Our numbers are slightly different, 753.9816. Um, they got 98. As long as it's around the same value, you're fine. It all comes down to uh, how many digits pi has. So this is how many digits our pi has, but Google's pi is a lot longer. Um, so we're good with cone. And honestly, you would do the same thing with prism. You would Google, what is the volume of a prism? And what you'd find is uh, return and then uh, spoiler. If, if you want to figure it out yourself, uh, three, two, one, uh, it's going to be height times width times depth. Right, that's going to be the volume of a prism. Now that we have these like individual uh, volume functions, we get to do something pretty interesting. I want to calculate the total volume of like that duck, I was saying, right? Where a duck is made up of a large sphere, a small sphere, and a cone. Right? They each have different radius and height. Uh, and here's a duck. Duck has large sphere, small sphere, cone as what kind of thing? An array. An array, right? And then each of these, like the cone and the small sphere, what kind of thing are they? Uh, those are objects. They're objects. So we're going to be dealing with array of objects. And I'm going to untoggle this. Console log total volume duck. So again, in the 21 day coding challenge, there is a test for this. Um, when you run it, it'll just run automatically. But what we want is the total volume should calculate the volume of the duck. And the duck's made up of these solids. So I want to, at the end of it, return something like a total volume. Right? Return, whoops, return total. And, which means I need to start off my total at some value. What should I start my total being? Probably zero. Yeah, so I might go let total equals zero, and maybe that's what I started off with. Um, but I need to figure out what the t sum is. What do you think I'm going to have to do if I receive this array of solids and I need to go through them and like sum up the volumes? Probably use a for loop. And use a for loop, right? So I'm going to go for, and then generally in here, I'm going to go for each one of them, uh, calculate the volume right, of that solid and add it to the total. Add it to the total. So for, and I'm going to write this with a for of, so for const solid of solids, right? meaning for each solid. Right? That's one way you could read it. For each solid, I could even throw a console log just to make sure that I'm actually going through all of them. Ayo, solid. And when I run this now, I see Ayo, and then the solid. Nice. And here's the last thing we need to do. We need to, for each one of these solids, calculate the volume of that solid. What uh, do you think I'm gonna have to do? Because I have all these different functions sphere, cone, and prism. And I only want to call 
the right one, right? So if, I, if the solid I'm looking at is a sphere, then I want to call sphere volume, right? Or vice versa and whatever for prism and um, cone. You could use an if statement to see could, if they match? Mm -hmm, I could use an if statement to see if they match, right? So if, and then there's going to be like some kind of decision being made, right? some condition. Uh, what do you think I'm going to write in here if, what uh, do I want to check? You could use dot notation to check uh, if the solid dot something mm -hmm. matches. Yeah, so each solid is going to have a type. Right? So I could look over here and see that each solid has a type. So I could say something like, if the solid type is sphere, right, then maybe what I want to do is increase the total volume by calculating the sphere volume. Right? And a sphere takes in radius. So how do I pass in that solid's radius in here? You could do solid dot radius. Solid dot radius. Right? That's really it. Because now when I run this, I'm going to find that when I run it, a number actually gets calculated because when I pass in the duck to the total volume, it's calculating all of the sphere volumes, but it's ignoring the beak, it's ignoring the cone. If I went ahead and did the math myself, I'd find that all of the large sphere with a radius of 40 and the small sphere with a radius of 10, that's what it adds up to. So let's say I wanted to add functionality for um, cone as well. I could go if the solid type equals cone, cone, cone. Then I would increase the total not by sphere volume, but by cone volume. Cone volume. And instead of it being just solid radius, what else would I add here? I think it's solid dot height. Yep. And that's probably it. And I could run this and just see do I get a different number? I did. 272318 as opposed to the number I had before. And that's technically it. Like if I, if I just wanted to calculate for the duck because it's large sphere, small sphere, and cone, but say I was doing a bouncy castle and it had like a, like a prism, then I'm going to need to put in prism mode as well. So if my solid dot type is prism, right, then I'm going to do something else. That's total plus equals um, prism volume. And then all the things that my prism would get, solid dot height. A solid dot width, a solid dot depth, solid depth. And, and I don't have an example for this here, but in the 21 day coding challenge, there's a test that you can run um, that includes prism. And that's it. Cool. That is challenge number 20. Uh, we have now automated the volume counting for these giant inflatable things. And the festival, the festival goers are going to be very excited with their big massive balloons, mass balloons, duck, uh, maybe a balloon arch. Um, going all out. Going all out. Really, really kind of blowing the budget on this. Um, great. Any questions? I think we're good. We're good. Awesome. Well, enjoy the uh, last two questions for the 21 Day Coding Challenge, Challenge 20. And tomorrow's is quite a bit of fun too as well. Um, I hope you've had a good time uh, visiting Codeville. And uh, yeah, uh, from, from all of us at Lighthouse. Bye. Bye. I'm Nima Boss Greeno and you are? Gabby Giuliaghi. Awesome.